In my last video, I mentioned that I wanted to give a little bit of extra information about tuning, specifically about beats and about scents. I'm going to split those up. So this first video is going to be about beats, what they are, why should we care, how can we learn to hear them, and how can we learn to uh, sing or play so we don't hear them. One of my biggest issues when you jump into the YouTube or Google search engine and start looking up things like tuning, um, it very quickly gets into a bunch of numbers, which is great background to have, but they don't necessarily make a lot of sense for the average singer who's just like, I just want to sing better. I just want to be in tune. How do I do that? And without getting into the vocal technique aspect about that, this is just going to get a little bit of background um, that is hopefully something that you can use right away rather than having to go down and pull out your calculator and get out you know, your old textbook to remember what a logarithm is. Um, so first of all, what is a beat? We need to start with what sound is. So sound is a vibration um, that's a wave and it travels through a medium like water or air. Now, when we see a graph of a sound wave, we'll see a line that goes up and down. That's not exactly what it is in real life. Um, it's really a compression and decompression of particles in the air. Ah, it's okay. I put a very short video down at the bottom that is not mine that I really like that explains that. But what we need to know is that a, a sound that's a note ooh, happens with frequency, uh, with a regular cycle, assuming that note's being held correctly. So every note is defined by its frequency. The one that we all have memorized is A440. So 440 cycles per second in order to create an A. So here's a middle C. Hope you can hear that. And I'm going to sing against that and I'm going to push it out of tune. And what I want you to listen for is uh, my voice fighting against this. So now I'm going to put a little pause in and show this to you with just the sounds that are on the iPad. What you'll notice is when I play a C against a C sharp, there's a lot of chatter. It goes wah, 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 wah. That's because those two sound waves do not line up with each other. They crisscross and they create turbulence in the air. Kind of like when you're in an airplane and you hit a pocket of air. Something changed and it's going to um, create a situation where we no longer are receiving uh, the same equal vibration on our eardrum. Wah, 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 wah. Sounds competing against each other. Now, perfect unison, two instruments, two people producing the exact same tone are going to line those frequencies up. If one person is slightly off, those frequencies are going to crisscross and that's going to create that chatter sound. So that works really well for unison notes. There are other intervals that line up once in a while. So if I have a note that goes twice as fast, it's still going to crisscross on this line in a regular pattern. It's not going to be uh, indiscriminately passing over each other with these vibrations. So on a unison note, we're all singing the same sound wave. On an octave, we've got twice as fast. On a fifth or a fourth, which are very related to each other, we're also going to have a feeling of regularity where these uh, sound waves cross at the same place. I recommend checking out the video below about how beats work. I'll put a couple other in the comments that I think are helpful with that. So the thing is, we're all actually expert listeners. We can tell when something's in tune or out of tune. If you go back and listen to records from even a few decades ago before auto-tune existed, we gave a lot more forgiveness to um, singers and instrumentalists for being slightly out of tune. But in this world where everything is very, very processed, we've all become absolute expert listeners we can really tell when something's in tune or out of tune. Applying it to ourselves sometimes is a little bit more challenging um, topic for another time. 
So hopefully you have a little bit more information now about what a beat is and you can decide how important that is to you in your music. Do know that there are types of music around the world that leave those beats in on purpose. Things are slightly out of tune because it produces kind of a shimmery hypnotic sound. Also, if you were to go search for binaural beats, it'll do the same thing. It gives kind of a whoa, 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 whoa. And that can be soothing depending on what you're going for. So there's your information about beats.